you in. It's good to see everybody here today. Glad you came out. Glad you came out. Phil Hunter coming in. Coming in late. Hey Amen. It's good to see everybody here today. Glad everybody's uh this is a little bit of overcast weather. I know it was hard. I know it's hard not to stay in the woods today, some of y'all. It's hard not to hunt today. I see you, brother. That took a lot of guts, didn't it, to come on down here, didn't it? Amen. <laughs> but uh, thank y'all for coming to God's house today. Um, my prayer is, is that the words that God's given me this week, I'll be able to pour out to you, that you'll be able to get it. Uh, that's my prayer. As we sing and worship today, our prayer is that the prayers and things that's going into that this week, you'll get that too. So uh, as we do our best, our prayers, you do your best so we can all give God our best so that we all meet here together. We can make something that's pleasing to God. That's the goal. That's the goal. Um, our memory verse for this month is, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing it into the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Today is trunk or treat tonight at 4 to 6 p.m. So come out, got cousins, uncles, aunts, invite them all out. Trunk or treat, um, good place the kids can come to and, and get candy without them worried and beating up down the road and at night in people's houses. Well, there's a lot of ugly in this world today, and you just worry sometimes where your kids are. Used to, when we was little, um, we'd load up on a, uh, on a hay trailer, and we would go to appointed places to ask for candy. We knew exactly whose house we were going to, because even in the 70s, my mama, we was all scared uh, back in the 70s. So if they were scared in the 70s, do you know 50 years later, we ought to be paying attention to where our children are. Um, the Thanksgiving meal coming up is November the 16th. If you have a lost iPad, if you've lost an iPad, please see James Riggins. A whole iPad? Listen, I ain't going to get into that. If you lost a whole iPad, are you ashamed to tell? <laughs> Left it in the kitchen. They're not here, I'll bet. Uh, lost the iPad. Uh, ministry leaders' budget sheets are in the hallway bulletin board. If you're a ministry leader in charge of a budget, we need to make sure you get that budget filled out and complete it by November the 9th, which is a great day at Miss Shue. Because she caught me. <laughs> 31 years ago. Amen. November the 9th. Amen. Um, are there any other announcements? Uh, prayer requests. We uh, had, an, had, a, had a tragedy last night. A young mo a mother lost her life in an accident. Um, somebody ran into her car. She was killed. She has four sons. It's got to be raised. So keep them in your prayers. Any others? Remember, Mr. Pete's going to have surgery tomorrow. Remember, Brother Tracy, Miss, Miss Kay. Um, I don't see Miss Patsy. Remember, Miss Patsy. She was here uh, Sunday, uh, Wednesday night. Mouthy as ever. Mouthy as ever. That's good. Um, so, remember, Miss Patsy. Any others? Janice Davis. Janice Davis. Any others? Say it again. Brandy Cole Bruce. Cole Bruce. Miss DJ. Any others? Any unspoken this morning? Amen. Lord knows um, to what extent he's going to take care of these things. Our prayer is that we, we uh, can minister to folks in the midst of it. Also, Miss uh, Taylor Roden, Mikey and Taylor, they have a brand new baby 
this morning. So um, uh, they're excited. And uh, that, that's, I got to see, see, got to see a picture of Mikey taking care of a diaper. Good for him. Good for him. So um, remember them in your prayers as well. Uh, remember all those standing in need of our prayers. I'm sure there are prayer requests out here that nobody's bringing up. There's uh, things in our hearts, issues in our lives. Um, and my prayer is that God, that we can get along with God in our own times and, um, and we can hear God. It isn't all the time that God answers our prayers because God answers our prayers 100% of the time. It's just not always the way we want it. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's yes but not right now. And sometimes it's no. But God hears your prayers. So just pray. Just, just continue to, to, to lay yourself out before your Savior and ask him to help. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today, uh, for the weather, for, Lord, maybe a little bit of rain to come. We just pray, God, you'll bless us. And, and, and Lord, thank you for all that we see you do around us. Lord, there's so many prayer requests today, Lord, so many uh, things going on in people's lives today, God, where people need a touch or people need an awakening, God, I just pray that you'll be beside them and give them peace. I pray for those that are going into surgery. Brother Pete, most of all, tomorrow, Lord, he'll be in surgery. Pray, God, he gets some relief. And um, continue to pray for Miss Patsy, Lord, as she gets better and better. Brother Tracy, just pray for him as well, Miss Kay. Lord, we just lift up all those that are in our church that are close to us, God, especially those that we don't know. We lift up that young family, Lord, who lost her mother. Uh, just pray, God, that you'll... Um, Line up the right people in those, those four boys' lives, God, so that they um, can have some semblance of home as they grow up. Lord, we recognize that you love us. God, help us to long for your coming and to look forward to being at peace and at home with you. Um, all these prayers we ask in your name. Amen. If you would please stand and visit just for a second. this morning, I, I just wanted to read a passage of scripture. It comes from Psalm uh, chapter 100, verse 4. It says this, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. And I'm, I'm just thankful to be in the Lord's house this morning. Thankful to have the opportunity to worship with you guys. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are ready. I know this front row is ready. Yeah, she's pumped up. Don't, don't let them out worship y'all here in the front. Y'all see more life than they've seen. God's brought you through more than he's brought them through. Amen. So don't let them out worship you this morning. Let's worship together. When all I 
see is the battle You see my victory When all I see is the mountain You see a mountain moved And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now For I am safe with you So when I fight So when I fight I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you're for me, and if you are for me, who can be against me? Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is the cross, God, you see the end.
Thank you for everything you do for us, the many, many blessings you give us in our life. Lord, oh, we're so undeserving of it. Oh, we've come to part of the service where we give back just a small portion of what you bless us with in the way of the tithe and the offering. Lord, I pray that we would use it to further your work on this earthly ministry. Lord, I pray that it would be pleasing to you and in your sight, Lord, that you would bless the giver. And uh, as we do this, we'll do it all in the name of Christ. Amen.
Um, this next song that we're going to sing is called Firm Foundation. Um, and you guys probably have heard it before. It, it plays um, sometimes before the service or after the service. But um, it just talks about uh, my favorite part is the bridge. It says, rain came and wind blew, but I'm standing strong on you. Um, yeah, and so if you guys would uh, please stand and worship.
Well, amen. Take your Bibles with me, if you would. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. When you find that, please stand with me for reading of God's Word. It's always fun to see these kids go out. They're so excited about going out and hearing their, their, their stories and their, their memory verses. I've, I'm always hearing throughout the week where kids are in competition to learn their memory verses and their stuff. And listen, that's good. It's good. We've got to teach them. They've got to, they got to know, and we have to teach them so they will know. So it's important when our kids are out here that we teach them what God's Word says. We'll start here. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 says this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken, unto him, I liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your word. God, I pray that today as we preach it, Lord, hearts will be changed. God, I pray that as we look at our own lives today and inspect our own salvation to see where it's founded. God, my prayer is that folks will take a long look at themselves today. Lord, we love you. We know you love us because you gave us Jesus. So God, I pray you let me preach today in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated if you will. Over the years, building houses I, or being in the construction business, I, I've only built my own houses from start to finish. Um, uh, I'm living in the third and hopefully last last one. I'm not sure the second one could be classified a real house. According to Miss Sugar, it was just a cabarna. It was just a cabarna. We lived in our barn for several years while we built our house. But um, looking back, I know that there's so many things about a house that's very, very important. A lot of people put a lot of, a lot of stake in, in a house, and, and some of you look at your house as your, your, your investment, uh, something that you pass down. Um, you may not have cash when it's all, when your life's over with, but you have a place that you've paid for, you have stuff that you have that you can pass down, and your kids can do whatever they want with it. You see your house as a treasure. You see it as something uh, that has equity, that has great value, and that's right. That's right. Our houses are places where we make memories in our homes. It's a place where we go into and do our Christmases and we do all of our stuff and we, 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 we cry there, we, we hurt there, we're, we're, we're patient there, we hear tragic news there, we hear good news there. And we always remember about our houses and our homes, especially the moms that make them a home, you know. And so um, growing up in our house, uh, I can remember uh, over the years um, people falling through our ceiling I think Jonathan fell through one time. Billy, my cousin Billy fell through another time. And it would take patching up, but it was always fixed, you know. And every now and then, if you look just right at the ceiling, you can tell where they came through, you know, and, and, and different parts of the house. And every, every now and then, that old house needs a set of, needs a set of shingles, you know, needs another set of shingles because uh, it takes a beating from the sun and the rain. Every now and then, you got to put a little paint on the outside. And every now and then, you got to put a little paint on the inside. But can I tell you, there's one place in that whole construction that you very rarely have to do any maintenance to. Now, that's the foundation. Listen, nobody stands around in the living room bragging about their foundation. Hey, when you have a housewarming party and everybody comes over, I'm sure the ladies aren't standing there saying, you know, we've got 18 inches by 12 inches of 5,000 PSI concrete with three-quarter inch rebar. <laughs> Bet that never happened. In a, in a, for a lady's house. But I bet they go around and look at the, the cabinets made of walnut or the floors that are, you know, the latest whatever floating floor or all wood floors or bamboo now. Uh, all kind of every extra thing, the granite or quartz. You don't have to treat quartz. Uh, well, I got granite. Uh, we've got formica. Or we've got this or we've got that. Uh, and you go into the living room and you, you got the latest carpet. This carpet doesn't stain, won't ever stain six months later. You got somebody to clean your carpet, you know. Hey, you, you brag about the paint. This paint, man, listen. You know, you seen a commercial, they throw the wine on the wall. They throw the glass on the wall. It won't dent. You, listen, you do, that, you do that at our house, we got a problem. I mean, and people, people look at trim. We built our house. I always wanted a chair rail in our house. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I just, uh, it just a lot of wall. You break it up with a board going all the way around the house inside. I have no idea. We have cherry. We, we, we got trim. Got to have it. That stuff don't do anything. You know, uh, that's like the curl on a pig's tail. It don't add no more ham. You know, <laughs> none of that stuff does. Fireplace. We got a fireplace. It goes all the way to the top. It goes all the way up to the top. Gas logs. It don't, there's no chimney coming through the house. You know, I didn't, first of all, I didn't want anything coming through my roof I got to worry about. I've been in the build, building business my whole life, so I don't want a hole in my roof that I got to deal with. There's no holes in my roof. And so I use gas logs, and uh, I don't really use them, to tell you the truth. And if it wasn't for having to have somewhere to hang stockings for Christmas, we wouldn't even have a fireplace. Amen? It ain't it funny, but though, we talk about those things and we brag about them. People come in and go, oh, I like that, or this, or the latest faucet. Or the latest idea about cabinetry with the spice racks that slide in or out, you know, they, or, the, or the lazy Susan type. You know, we talk about that, we, uh, uh, but nobody ever crawls up under the house with a flashlight going, look at there. <laughs> How about that? Two rows of concrete blocks filled with concrete to the top. Nobody ever talks about it. I talk about it if I have to drill through it because I want them hollow, Amen. But nobody ever, talks about, nobody ever talks about the foundation. Nobody ever spends a lot of time on it. I talked about ours when I was at Hickox because we was building that house over there. It kept raining. I dug the foundation, laid it out, dug the foundation with a shovel, dug them out, and a uh, uh, concrete man couldn't come the next day. He come the day after. Guess what done the next day? It rained. So I dug the, dug the footers again because they washed in. Uh, the footers, I think the footers today have to be somewhere around... Um, 12 by 12 footer, I'm not sure, not 100%, maybe 14 inches, could be 16. When it was all said and done, my footers were 24 inches wide by about 18 inches deep. And can I tell you, it took twice the concrete. You know, so I said, man, me and an old timer was standing there, Mr. Uh, Ephraim Johnson. I said, Mr. Ephraim, because we, we was doing the whole thing. He was doing the block, I was pouring concrete, we framed it, built it, everything, electric, plumbing, the whole nine yards. We started pouring concrete, and I realized right then I had to order another truck. So I was whining about concrete. We put chairs in the bottom, not sitting chairs, but metal chairs to hold up rebar so it sits in the footer. We had everything wire tied. Everything was, listen, I had like a gazillion dollars in the footer. So I was worried, holy cow, how in the world am I going to afford to actually build the house if I got twice the amount of money in the footer? I remember Mr. Ephraim looking at it. He was 77 years old. He said, well... It won't never settle. That's the way he put it. It won't never settle. He said, it'll always be there. You know, I look back, and I'm glad of that. I'm glad of that. You know, in our own lives, the foundation that we lay is the most important part. You can brag about your job or your children, how beautiful your wife is, how handsome your husband is, what kind of car you drive, where you go and spend your vacations, how much money you have in the bank. You can brag about a lot of things in your life. But there's only one thing that truly, truly matters when it's all said and done is where the foundation was laid. That's it, man. Where it was, what it was made of, where it's sitting, that's the thing is your foundation. In life right now, I bet there's some of you in here right now uh, that, that truly enjoy church and uh, truly enjoy coming down to God's house and, uh, and God has truly changed your life and your foundation is sure. Your foundation is sure. There's nothing like uh, having a broken heart and you wind up on your knees before a holy God and as your knees hit the ground, they, they hit hard because where they land is not beach sand, it's rock. And you realize as you reach down and place your hands on the ground that God's got you, that, that you're, a, you're a child of the king. No matter what come, what may in your life, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how hurtful it gets, no matter how great it gets or how happy it is, the, the single thing that grounds you is the fact that you have built a house, your life, on the rock of God. It's a great thing. Sadly, there's those on the other side as well. You know, where it don't take much water to wash it away. You know what? We was in Bay St. Louis several years ago. In 2005, we went down with Hickox Baptist. I was pastoring over there. We went down just to see where we could help. We was looking for a project to do. And Lord, when we got down there, there was a lot of projects. We had no idea where to start. Lady pulled up, ran us down, pulled up beside us and asked, 
Are y'all here to help somebody? I said, yes, ma'am. He said, would you help us? Yes, ma'am. So before it was over with, over the next three years, I guess, we rebuilt our house, got it all back, got her in it, got everything put back together, got another couple of churches, churches I knew in West Virginia, Ohio. They pulled resources, brought people. We rebuilt our house, put her back in that house. Uh, for spring break the next year, all of our kids went up there and, and done all of her landscaping. Next year, we all went up there and, and redone a rental property that she had next door. She'd have some income. But I, one thing I remember, I'll never forget it. Right there at Bay St. Louis, when you go south from Bay St. Louis, Bay St. Louis along 90, the road was just blown up and gone in places. It was just gone. We could look over there and see the bridge over to Pass Christiana across there from Bay St. Louis as we traveled south. Um, New Orleans was way off in the distance. I mean, you might can see the lights of it, but mainly you saw a place called Waveland and uh, Bay St. Louis. There was another little town right in the middle, and that was Ground Zero. That's where it come ashore. So as we rode down 90 and we're looking, there was nothing but slabs. And in some places, the slabs had blown up. That the wind had worked its way into the dirt, into the mud, and, and flipped home slabs over. The slabs had cracked and came up in pieces and they were just flipped over out to the... Listen, old mangled up trees. You can tell the old trees that were that big around. Old gnarled up limbs, they were still there. Young trees, gone. The old trees had been through it before, they were still there. But if we rode through, I noticed one house along this stretch. There was no trees. There was no houses. There was nothing. One house. I said, what in the world is that? Because it looked like a skeleton. So what in the world? So as, as we got closer, we was looking at all these slabs, cars back there. There was a shrimp boat two miles back into the trees back there. It was bad. And this house, this, this place was, all these houses right on the, I mean, we're riding down 90 and the ocean's on one side. If you've been down 90 through there, ocean's on one side, houses on the other. We get to this one spot and all the slabs are, are, are slick. I mean, nothing, not even a nail left in them, gone. All these slabs. You see, you said there was, the, was the garage, there was the house, there was, a, there was a pump house, good next yard, there was the house, there was a garage, there was a pump house, there was a playhouse, there was some little slab of something. But we looked down there, and there was a big steel structure. As we got closer to it, I got, to, I got looking. They had, they had poured concrete way down in the ground, big concrete pillars. I mean, way down, way down, way down, way down, way down. And, and, and had it all the way around, concrete all the way around. You can see it. And these big steel eye beams come up out of the ground. At about 12 feet, there was a platform of steel eye beams. And the steel went up, and they made the, the shape of a, of a roof. I looked at it, and it was still square. It was still straight. I figured it at least twisted, ripped. It was still straight. That's the biggest eye beam I thought. They've been through a storm before. <laughs> Folks that built that's been through a storm. And I began to realize the foundation's still there. We come back three years later. You know what house was back first? The house. You, you know what they had to do to get back going? Just put the pretty stuff back. They just had to put the pretty stuff back, like the wood, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the sheetrock, the paint. Why? Because the foundation was firm. The foundation was firm. He had to put some things back to make it like you like you wanted it to, to pretty to, but the foundation was firm. That's how some of you that's how some of you's lives been. God has blew away some of the pretty things and you've been left to a spot sometimes where it's just been naked construction, just just the foundation. How many of you are there today? You say, Brother Ray, I'm I'm so thankful for my foundation. The Bible says here in verse 24, Therefore, whoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will, I will liken them unto a wise man which has built his house upon a rock. Now, he, he, here we have the third of three different pictures. Um, if you look back in your Bible here, Matthew, just a little bit, you'll see in verse 13 where he talks about the straight and the wide gates, meaning that, that you have a choice to make. You can go through the straight gate or the wide gate. You can take the straight path, Oh, um, the, the straight is the gate, narrow is the way, or, or wide is the gate that goes to destruction. You can choose one or two paths. And if you will, that's like the beginning of life. 
That's like the beginning. You know, you, you kind of start life out in a direction. You kind of choose what kind of career you want. You choose who you're going to marry. Some things you choose. And the same way with salvation. You choose to be saved or you choose not. There's a lot of people today who choose to come to church. They've choose to make a lifestyle of coming to church, not being saved. There's a lot of churches today that slap full of people where preachers ain't preaching it anymore, where they feel slap comfortable to come into God's house, lost Sunday after Sunday. I told you before, and I tell you every chance I get, I want to hang you over hell every chance I get because I want you to know without a shadow, listen, without a shadow of a doubt that you know where you're going to go when you die. Listen, at the very end of your life, whenever you hit your knees before a holy God, I don't want there to be sand shifting where you're not sure. Son, I want them to get bloody from the rock you just felt down on. Amen? I want, it, I want you to know without a doubt when this thing's said and done where your next breath of air is going to be taken from. Amen? That's what, that's what the most important thing is in your life ought to be. That's what it ought to be. Are you all right? Amen, Brother Ray. It's all right. Y'all shout and scream at the ball games. Some of y'all made fools of yourselves yesterday over a game that didn't even hardly matter. And come in God's house. Oh, I'm all tired. He's loud. He's loud today. Yeah. Amen. Amen, Brother Ray. Straight is the gate and wide is... That kind of gives the idea of choosing. You, you choose. Some of you some of you, have gone through your life and you really hadn't chosen. Some of you have gone your whole life you really hadn't chosen to be a Christian. You just kind of, you just kind of, 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 of molded your life around maybe your dads or your moms or some of your people that you know that they profess to be Christians so you kind of act like they do. And somehow or another you assume that that's salvation. That's not. You think that if my mom's not mad at me and my dad's not yelling at me, then I must be saved. Or I can go down to church and they ask me to teach Sunday school, I must be saved. Or I can go down there and I don't feel guilty, I must be saved. Hey, I got news for you. Unless you ever come to the place in your life where you recognize that your sin was going to separate you from a holy God and you was going to spend an eternity in hell and fry like bacon, you ain't never been saved. Hey, listen, if you've never come to the place where you recognize that you was going to go to hell without a Savior, you've never been saved. Hey, I can remember sitting in church my whole life, knowing all about church stuff and church things, being around God's people, enjoyed it, man. Enjoyed the music. I just I enjoyed it. But somehow or another, I was inoculated to the gospel, if you will. I'd been on it so much that I was just so used to it that, I don't know, those are the hardest ones to be saved, by the way. Those are the toughest ones to get out of your pews. Is those people that know. Those people that know. Hey, I can remember getting on my knees that night and asking God, it was like a, whew. Listen, I felt the rock up under my knees as I gave my life to Christ that night. And I'm going to tell you again, nobody's ever had to hunt me to go to church. Hey, nobody ever had to hunt me or beg me to come to revival or go down there or help with somebody or go love on somebody that needs something. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God moved in that night and He changed my life. Listen, I, it ain't no different for me than it is for you. If God changed you, they ought to be a difference. We come in week after week with all kinds of excuses to God on our Sunday. Well, I'd like to serve you this week, God, but I was busy. Oh, God, I'd love, to, I'd love to serve you, but the ball game was yesterday, you know. I, I'd like to help out, but, you know, I got to root for them dogs. Lord, I'd love to win, but, I, you know, I got that high school stuff. I got, Lord, I'd love to, but I, there's going to come a day. All those things are going to fall away at the feet of Jesus. There's going to come a day. There's going to come a day. Secondly, there's, a, there's another group right here. Um, so not only is there a first choosing, almost like the beginning of life, if you will, the straight and wide gates, but secondly, there's the area of growth where we talk about the false prophets, where he uses trees and thorns and thistles. It talks about the, the Christian growth. It talks about how we should be growing as a Christian. Hey, you can always tell. Listen to me. Don't go to sleep on me. You can always tell whether or not somebody's saved by how they're growing. You can like it or don't. It don't make no difference to me. But you can always tell that, that man or that woman or that kid who's been saved because they want more of it. Listen, you ain't having to beg them anymore. You're not having to convince them that there is a God. You don't have to show them and beg them and line them up. No, 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 no. Those that are saved have the Holy Spirit of God living in them, and they want something different. 
Hey, they've been to the well, and they got sweet water, and they want to go back. Listen, man, I, I, Tom Tenney wrote a book called God Chasers one time. I read that book. Man, what a, what a great book. I'm constantly chasing after my next experience or my next big moment with God. Constantly. Happens this week. It'll, I, my prayers, it happens tomorrow like it did last Monday. See, I look forward to sitting down at, on Mondays, kind of getting an idea of what I'm going to preach for next week. So I can dwell and pray on it all week long. See, I, I, I want to talk to God throughout the week. And, and listen, God's going God's to impress on my heart things that need to be said and things that need to be, be done and done the right way. Listen, I don't want to stand up here and throw rocks at you every Sunday. I, that's, not what I, that's not what I'm getting at. But I have a responsibility before God. I'm going to meet God one day. And about all the people in this crowd, there's only one of us that God's going to hold accountable for other folks. Just me. God's going to ask me, why don't you do it? Why don't you go see him? Why don't you ask him? Why don't you tell him? You knew. You said, brother, is that why you... Is that why you call me? Is that why you text me? Is that why you... That's why. That's why. And the fact that I don't want to see you go to hell. You see, I always worry about those folks that don't want to grow. I always worry about those folks that you got to give them an extra push to come to God's house. I always worry about those folks that you got to... Ah, you just, they just, they just, it's not 100%. You know, listen. I bet you... Nobody in the free world knew whether or not you was a Georgia fan or a Gator fan yesterday. Everybody knew, right? I mean, when it comes time to go to your high school football game, everybody knows what team you're rooting for. I was chaplain over here for, I was preaching over at Hickox. Some of the kids got me a shirt. They cut it in half, sewed it back together, had Charlton on one side, Brantley on the other. And I'd go to one half side for, half for one part of the game and the other side for the other half. And that didn't work out either very good. And, you know, I said, well, you just are what you are. So I went back to Charlton. They like to beat our teeth in that next year. Amen. So uh, look, looking back, I always worry. As a preacher, this, this is you, man. This is where you're going. As ministers, there's always that worry about these kids right here. Hey, he worries about you. He worries about you. He worries about you. God's going to hold him accountable one day. Hey, we, we worry. Our hearts break. Whatever, you don't seem to care about the things of God. And there's a lot of you in here right now, I'll be honest with you, you come in cause, to make somebody else happy. Come on. You come in to keep somebody off your back. Hey, listen, there's some of you that are Christians in this room right here, come just enough to shake it before God and say, see, see how faithful I am? God knows. Don't you do that. Don't you act like you got it all together before God. He knows. And finally, there's that third group of people, and I'll be done. There's that third group of folks. So we, got the, we have the, the straight and narrow gates. Then we have the, so that's the beginning of life. And then we have the, the, um, the growth and how we grow. So that's kind of like the middle of our life. But then we have the, the, the foundation. That's kind of the end of our life. Because that's where it all matters, you see. I've seen, I've seen, new, I've seen people take... And, and build a new house onto an old house. You ever seen that? Some of you might have done it. You, you take a new house, new construction, new everything, new... Fun. Which, piece is going, which piece is going to get old the fastest? Which one's going to break down first? If you're going to get termites into the new one, where are they going to come from? From the old one, generally. If, if you try to build onto to something that's old with something brand new and bigger, you've got to be careful of the old. If you ain't careful, the old will bring you down. Some of you in here right now, Saying, well, this is my foundation, but you never tore down the old. You never got rid of all that that, that was bad, all that was, that, was cre uh, that, was, that was corroded, that that was breaking up. I've seen, I've, seen some, I've seen some houses, and you've seen them too. I've been under people's houses that had little, had little blocks and pieces of rock stacked on top of one another, not even concrete, and then they had a tube of 12 on it. And I look at the rock, and you, it's kind of like Jenga. You can almost pull one of them out and go, oh, I'm under the house. You know. And, and, or you look up under them, and you see, you see it spanning 22 feet. And, and, and it's not a TGI beam. It, it's just spanning. 
And you know, without a doubt, oh, it ain't, it ain't Boeing today. Give them a year. I see garage doors. Anything over about 16 feet ought to have a TGI beam, for those of you that care. You said, well, you, I see the boy's house the other day, building a brand new house. Went there and looked at his air conditioning work. And when I was walking out, I looked up, just construction. Looked up, had two tuba sixes nailed together with a piece of ply in it, with it, spanned 20 feet. Hang on, hold. Oh, it's straight today. It's straight today. Two years from now, his garage door's not going to want to close. So he'll start making racket. He's going to wonder what in the world. Things are going to start squealing. He's going to have a problem. And to repair the problem, he's going to have to do a lot of damage to otherwise good material. That's what happens to Christians. See, they start building wrong. They start doing it the wrong way. They start hearing wrong stuff. They start believing wrong things because they respect somebody that they think is doing it the right way. This is the right way. Hey, listen, this is the only right way. Somebody, somebody sitting here today, you say, well, I just don't, there's some things I believe, some I don't believe. Listen, I don't give a rip what you believe or don't believe. I believe what this book says. And you can agree with me or don't agree. But if I say it different than this book, I want you to tell me. But this book right here is the blueprints. Hey, and you can build it however you want to. There's a reason there's an inspector. Y'all right? There's a reason there's an inspector. There's a reason why God comes by and the Holy Spirit comes by and, and convicts you of things in your life that are wrong. Because it's going to show up in the future. It's going to show up, man. Build our house. And here at Tracy, we'll build it. And I went ahead and I had, bought me a spray foam rig, spray foam the whole house. I made the walls two by six on the outside, sprayed them six inches thick of foam. People said, you don't need all that. Ain't about need. And that said, well, it only takes six inches of of R7 insulation to give you the thickness you need in a roof, and then you have, no, no, I sprayed mine 12 inches. First off, it was my spray rig, I mean, I could could do that. But the reason I did it, because it's my house. Hey, I wanted to make sure that whenever she had it, or her great-grandkids had it, it's still good. It's still good. I pitched the roofs high, so that we're about... Them sitting flat enough for fungus to grow in the shingles. Y'all right? I pitched it high enough I had to work at that for a long, long time. I won't ever have to re-shingle that place probably. That's some things I figured for. I run home runs, electrician, to every spot in my house and put them in places. I didn't run them through the walls. I come up and went down, come up and went down. So I couldn't get nails in the wall. Four miles of 12-2 installation in my house. 12-2 copper in my house. I, mean, I look at things like that same way salvation as we think about, what are we doing to build our houses? What are we doing on this foundation? Listen, what kind of foundation are you on anyway? Are, are, you, are you excited about the fact that Christmas is coming because you, you, you like all the Christmas stuff? Or, or do you think that 2,000 years ago, God visited man? God visited man and left himself here to eventually die on a cross made from a tree that he grew to pay for our sins. That's how I see Christmas. You know, when I think of Christmas, and, and, and we, listen, we're going to have Christmas plays this year, dramas, and all the kids. We're going to have a, we're gonna have a uh, um, what's it called? Pajama night. All of our kids wear pajamas. Everybody's in. Christmas night. We're going to have a ball. We're going to make some new traditions this year. We're looking forward to it. We're putting the foundation down. We're trying to lay a foundation. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell them the Christmas story. Not from Santa Claus's point of view, but from Jesus's. How's your foundation this morning? Are you saved? Are you saved? Listen, you, the Bible talks about not tying new wine skin to old wine skin or no old in the new and no new in the old. It's not good for it. Listen, you can't take this world and try to graft it into your Christian life. It'll make everything stink. It'll make everything rot. And if you're not a Christian this morning, you know. You know where the foundation is. You know how it is. Man, listen, I, there's a lot of things I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen at work this week. I pray for my guys they don't get hurt. I, I pray for jobs, I pray for work, I pray for our church, I come here, I pray for folks. 
But I don't know what's going to happen. One thing I do know, there's only one thing I'm certain of in this life, is that's where my foundation is anchored. It's in the rock of Jesus. Listen, my foundation has been, been laid for years. And I, and I still, I'm still every night, listen, I still go drive, try to drive deeper, drive those bars deeper. I want to end the rock. This morning, are you saved? I'm praying the Holy Spirit's moving around this place right now, even convicting hearts as we in this place right now. Are you saved? I used to ask young people that. I'd say, listen, don't raise your hands, but answer this. Are you saved? And I'd go around the room. Are you saved? Are you saved? And they'd say, I said, don't, don't nod your head or anything because it'll make somebody that's feel odd that's not saved. I want everybody just to, so I'd go, are you saved? Are you saved? Are you? And, and, and you'd get the kids, and as you went by them, you'd almost feel the Holy Spirit answering for them. Holy Spirit began to work in their little lives. So let me ask you a question this morning. Are you saved? Are you saved? Listen, is your foundation deep? There's going to come a time it's going to matter. Hey, we, we can brag about how pretty it is right now and all the fine stuff you got in it. But these storms, of, storms called life will blow all those things that don't matter away. And all that you left with is that foundation. Are you saved? The king's coming. The king he could come back today. Some of you are here. Some of you here today are saved. Some of you are saved. Have you acted like it lately? Are you trying to gather things around your foundation? Don't look much like what you started out building. Today's your day. Today's the day you can come clean with God. Today's the day you can finally be honest with yourself about some things in your life that might need correction. Today's the day. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you, God, for your blessings, most of all. We thank you, God, that you look our way and that you're convicting of sins. God, for that person who's sitting here right now, God, where you're convicting them of sin in their life, God, I pray they answer that. And if they're saved, God, I pray they come ask forgiveness of sin. God, I pray for Christians that are in this room, Lord, that will just come pray. Pray for those that are struggling. Pray for those whose knees are on sandy soil. God, I pray for those here that are saved that, Lord, need to clean some things up and get things right. But God, there's that one particular person or those, those people that are here today whose foundation's not in the rock. Storms of life come up and it blows them out of the water. And these storms are almost like the judgment. It kind of shows us what we are. So God, I pray for those who profess Christianity that just a little storm in life has blown them out of the boat. God, I pray for salvation in their life. God, I pray you'll grow them. I pray you'll show them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother, I don't think I'm saved. that would be a good time to come. I'm going to ask Christians to come to the altar and pray. It makes this place a lot less daunting when God-fearing believers are down here at God's altar lifting up other folks in prayer. You may be here this morning. You say, Brother Ray, I just don't know. Well, today you can know. Today you can nail it down. Today you can be without a doubt. There may be some of you here right now that say, Brother Ray, we need to make some choices about our family. Today can be your day. Brother Ray, here's, we need to make some choices about where I'm going to work or where I'm going to do these. Today can be your day to nail some things down. It could be your day. Are you saved? Are you saved? Jesus is coming back. Hey, and I'm going with him. I have no doubt that I'm going with him. If I left this week, who'd preach next week? Would you be here? Would you be here? What would you, what would you do? What would you do if the rapture of the church took place before next Sunday? What if it was today? Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Where's your foundation laid? Is it laid in this world and in doing things and try just doing them right? Or is your foundation laid in Jesus? Where even though you blow it and even though you, you know it's not right all the time, it's still in Jesus. Hey, I'm thankful my salvation ain't based on how good I am. It's based on the salvation that Christ gave. He accepted me as one of his beloved. I am in. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. And I'm in. Are you in? 
Are you in? Are you a Christian? It's going to matter one day. It's going to matter. It's going to matter one day. I had a young mother and folks and four little boys hit by a drunk driver last night. It matters now. Things matter. What will you do? What will you do? Some of you in that growing stage, that growing stage where you're learning how to do it. Now, what will you do when you're in the final stage? What will you do when life has run its course and you, you've, you've bought your last truck and you've, you've hoed your last row of corn and you've, you've done your last few things? Then what? Then what? Do you have the kind of faith that's anchored in Christ? that I'm going to spend an eternity with my Savior when I leave here. Dying faith. Do you have it? Do you have it? The King's coming. The King is coming. preaching today. My prayer is is that all you come back at 4 o'clock today and Amy quits talking. Oh, man. She getting on Jeffrey? Jeffrey need getting on? My prayer is that all of you come back at 4 o'clock. You go, I don't have no kids. Just come on back. I'm not a kid. I'll be here. I'll be doing that cake walk, eating cupcakes. Amen? Just stand there and walk. You walking? You can eat cupcakes. So, Listen, we'll be having fun. It may need a spot for some of you to help with some of these kids or some of the stuff. So, Brother Ray, I ain't a member. If you come and we'll use you, just come on. Because what I hope is that our community fills this place up today. And uh, be outreach. Because we're going to be inviting folks to come back to church. That's the goal. Anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? It's good to see one of my old kids, Jesse, back there. And his new wife. Well, a few months now. Got a brand new baby on the way, he told me back there. Amen. Brand new baby. So uh, there's an extra one here today. It's good to be here. I'm so glad everybody come out to God's house. Make sure where you stand with God. Make sure where you stand, because it worries me to death. Brother Mac, would you dismiss us, please?